Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode we have a lot to do with this little vehicle, the mobile refinery, and it's currently stuck in low Kerbin orbit and it doesn't have enough Delta V to get to Minmus. And so the plan was to refuel it possibly by using the Mu Fuel Depot, which we have left in Kerbin orbit for quite a long time without using it. It's some uh, there it is. And so we could bring the move fuel depot in. Uh, well, probably we would boost the mobile refinery out to a higher orbit using its current delta V, and then rendezvous the move fuel depot with it in order to refuel it. But but before we do that, it would make a lot of sense to transfer Kerbals over here. Uh, right now, we don't have enough Kerbals to run the thing. Uh, I think the total. Where is is this crew roster? Uh, yeah, okay, so we've got we've got space for seven it looks like. Okay, how do I close this now? I don't want all of this. So I don't think we need all seven, but we should transfer some more crew here while we can, and it'll be easiest to do that while it's in low curve and orbit. Uh, I think we'll transfer three more and then we'll proceed from there. Uh, instead of just leaving Dude Van all on his own. So, yep, uh, that, that'll that be the first thing. And then the second thing, and the reason I'm transferring three is, of course, because we already have a pod ready for that. Why is it rotating? Hmm. Come on now. Anyway, uh, getting distracted. Uh, and then perhaps we'll be able to see whether it can do its business. So that's why I half-loaded with ore, substrate, and minerals, because then I can see whether it can produce what it needs to produce. Uh, it's got some interesting rotation to it, but uh, hopefully I'll, I'll be able to leave that be. Anyway, after we get uh, more crew over and do the refueling, uh, we also need to send over a drilling unit to to Minmus so that we can get the further resources. I think the first drilling unit I'll aim for is one that can handle ore and substrate and then we'll have to do something similar probably for minerals, assuming the ore and substrate one works. The reason I say ore and substrate is because uh, the ore and substrate uh, is drilled by the same drill. The minerals has a separate drill. Okay, it would be possible to put one of the ore and substrate drills on one side and a minerals drill on the other, other side, but then you're going to have to have three containers and so that makes the vehicle heavier, so best to just do those two first. Anyway, uh, let us get some more crew up here. Alright, so viewers may remember the CRT, the Crew Rescue and Transfer Vehicle. Uh, it's usually looking more like this, of course, but I thought to give it a little bit of a boost in, in Delta V by just slapping on a booster. Very traditional Kerbal way of doing things. Uh, except I have to get it on the right node there. There are too many of these little little engines on the bottom, but uh, yeah, so uh, just a SRB, procedural SRB there uh, to give it a little bit more of a boost at the beginning. Uh, normally I don't go in for SRBs of course, but in this case I think it'll be alright. Uh, so yeah, uh, just a procedural SRB to get it going and we'll put some launch clamps for for sport here. We could probably actually slap parachutes on this and maybe it'll still be in render distance when it hits the ground, but uh, nah, I think I'll just go in for, that's a little bit too much. There we go. Alright, so uh, with this we will launch our new crew for the, the mobile refinery. Uh, let's go to the astronaut complex, we seem to need more, more Kerbals. We're deploying a lot of Kerbals in, into space these days. Now, as I understand it, uh, stupidity is not something we want, but it looks like we've got quite a stupid stupid cast of Kerbals here. Um, and for some reason, with the Kerbals we already have... Oh, there we, there we can see... Uh, okay, so Ludgast should definitely go. Um, Ludgast, Desvi, and Bilbro should probably be our guys. Uh, not optimal, but better than nothing. Okay, so uh, we'll go with that. Oh, yeah, we lost Jeb. But we've assigned 25 Kerbals. So we, we're, we're quite a... 
We're quite a space agency. We've got 25 Kerbals deployed currently, all requiring life support. That's something. Yet yeah, here, when you hover over them, you can't see their, uh, their stats. That's a little bit annoying. Odd that Sherlock isn't particularly bright, but anyway, uh, so we've got that. Uh, I don't know if it's good to have what kind of mix of scientist and engineer we need, but I, I think this will be all right. Let's try it out. Okay, so here we are. Three Kerbals on, but at least um, our our pod has parachutes and everything, so hopefully things will be all right. Uh, we're going to be trying for a uh, higher orbit than the mobile refinery, since the mo mobile refinery is in a fairly low orbit. Uh, so yeah, we're going to try and phase with it like that. Okay, Bilbo, Ludgas, and Desvi, let's get you on your way. Of course, the great thing about procedural SRBs is that you can configure how much thrust they have, and so this is a ideal amount of thrust to get us going right, looking good. I don't know how much pitch authority I have. Depends on the reaction wheel in the pod. It looks okay. Looks pretty good. All the Kerbals are worried. Probably a sign of their intelligence. Okay, well, the SRV has given us quite a boost. Off. Oh, that was weird. Okay, ignite. Uh, alright. So, here we go, the standard CRT. Seven engine. I think that uh, there's a six engine variant and a seven engine, always with the uh, Rockmax 48 7S's. This, of course, 0 0.90, so they haven't been nerfed yet. And we need to rotate a lot more than we have been. Of course, I was cautious about rotation when on the SRB stage. But now we don't need to worry so much. Probably we'll leave this CRT in orbit once we've made the transfer. No particular reason why we should bring it back until it needs to bring back some Kerbals with it. So it'll be up there to bring Kerbals back. I hope I got the solar panels action group. Let me see. Yep, yep, they, they're action grouped. Very good. Alright, so now we don't have any direct intersection with the target, but the target will definitely catch up to us soon. So let us proceed. This vehicle has plenty of life support, 26 days for the three crew. Okay, here we go, time for the rendezvous burn. We've got quite a crowded low curve in orbit by the way. Having this hang out in low carbon orbit might not be the greatest idea ever. I do have debris limiting on, I think, but I've got quite a, I've got actual vessels, quite a lot of them here. We've got a leftover egg, we've got a probe, we've got an Eve probe waiting for transfer, Eve lander there, uh, the Moo fuel depot. The station is in the higher orbit than all of this. The station's up there, so that's a positive. But if I click open debris, you can see, wow, that's a lot of stuff. Especially since it's such a tight area around Kerbin that I place everything initially. I wonder, can this... Oh, I don't know if I have a remote controller on here. I don't know if it can even operate without... without crew. Oh, shoot overdid things. Yeah, I don't know if it can operate without a crew. That's a problem. Didn't think about that. I don't want to have anybody hang out here though. 
Okay, it looks like we're lined up for docking. Okay, five meters. Actually, four meters according to this. Been very patient about this. Okay, we've got contact and it's all good. Now, where did they get in and out from, from this module? I want to transfer them. Well, let me, I guess I can just click that crew hatch and say transfer. I want to transfer them to the mobile refinery. Unable to reach the mobile refinery. Uh-oh. Unable to reach the Honey Badger command pod. What's going on? There's a crew hatch. Where's the crew hatch on the Honey Badger command pod? Here. Wait. Clicking that hatch doesn't really allow me to do anything. This Honey Badger command pod has a faulty hatch. Crew hatch. Okay, that, that works. But I see a hatch here. But clicking on it doesn't do anything. Huh. Well, if I EVA Dude Van, I don't even know if he can get back in again. Let me try and use this uh, this ship manifest. So let's say Tal Command Pod to Mobile Refinery. Transfer in progress. Wow, it actually takes time. I've never tried using this method before. How long is it going to take? Action in progress cannot close window. This could be bad. What if it just got hung up on it? And it was actually supposed to be an instantaneous thing. I mean, the game itself didn't think that the Kerbal could be moved to the mobile refinery. Desvi sure is taking a long time to move into the mobile refinery. I think I'm going to conclude that this isn't working right, but I don't know what to do about it. We've got a hatch here. Let me try EVAing one of the other ones. Bill bro. Okay, grab. Board. Okay, well that works, but Desby is still caught in limbo. If I say start metals, okay, so it's it's producing metals apparently. Yeah, we've got metals being produced. So, just one is sufficient. That's that's good to know, but obviously not uh, not very efficient right now. Let's see if we can move lead gas. Okay, and board. All right, well, two in the mobile refinery, and that doesn't seem to be. Let me let me stop metals. Let's start it again. Okay, a slight increase in efficiency now. Okay. That is interesting, and that is consuming ore. All right. Desvi, well, let's see if I can mess with this. Uh, I'm got EVA Desvi. Okay, so Desvi was still trapped over here. Looks like the whole transfer thing and the honey badger. I don't know if I can get Dubban out. I'm gonna have to. I guess I'm gonna have to try that, but I'm worried that I won't be able to get him in again. I think Duvan should be just considered trapped in the Honey Badger command pod. Okay. Yeah, I guess that'll be the thing for now.
he's going to be a permanent fixture in there hardwired into the system somehow okay grab and board okay well this is action in progress kind of close window I hope that's not gonna be a permanent glitch well we can do that at least okay but I don't know see I uh, I see a hatch but I can't click on it the way I can with the other stuff and I don't see any other hatch I should have maneuvered one of the other kerbals over here we'll, we'll do that some other time now, I'm not too sure I can command control the command pod no uh, we don't have enough crew so the command pod is just, just gonna be left drifting I mean the the CRT it's just gonna be left drifting awaiting somebody to meet up with it for a trip down I guess that'll be fine all right well yep everything going to plan so far let me stop metals and see if our oh yeah okay now much better efficiency 41.7 percent okay so that works out but I'm afraid uh, Duvan might be trapped in this command pod and we're gonna have to leave this as yet another vessel waiting for something to do okay so I'm going to undock with it no. okay so now we want to boost up so that we can make our Minmus transfer and then we'll have the move fuel depot rendezvous with us and then we will boost all the way up there is there a reason oh I, I was looking at I was having the Delta V going up the reason the Delta V is going up is because our ore is being consumed and the ore is lighter than the metal products that we're getting out of it ah okay so we're actually creating Delta V by processing it now I don't know what will happen when we process the substrate and minerals that might it might be that I can't imagine that their products weigh more than that they do I imagine there's some scrap that we can just send out of the airlock I suppose now I wouldn't say it's the easiest thing for the move fuel depot to rendezvous with this the move fuel depot only has tiny little thrusters on it uh, so might be a tough rendezvous it does have a lot of fuel and a lot of monopropellant of course okay uh, I think I'll leave it there I'll retain 80 meters per second we're almost done with our ore processing so let me uh, time warp through that and then I'll have it start working on its substrate doesn't really produce much metal though possibly with the drilling units I'll just keep the drilling units attached to it while it processes the ore substrate or minerals whatever I happen to want to process because it's got far more storage for the products than for the for the resource and the drilling unit will be able to contain much more than 800 ore probably in the thousands somewhere okay so let's uh, once Carol Joint Reinforcement stops its thing let us stop metals and start polymers missing inputs uh oh polymers probably needed ore as well maybe start chemicals okay chemicals is working out 35 at uh, 37.5% efficiency and we can do that I'll have to check out what uh, what polymer is actually required probably or as well okay so with that let me now and looks like our vessel mass is going down so we'll get more Delta V out of it but uh, we can turn to our move fuel depot and try and rendezvous with this okay here we are with the move fuel depot something we haven't seen in quite a while and it does have the issue with the reaction wheel remember there was a reaction wheel bug though I thought it was inflated now it's re-deflated to an even smaller size it looks like and so it's sort of tucked in there and this docking port I definitely won't be using this docking port it looks like it might be glitchy but uh, we'll, we can dock on that side 
And so it's only got these tiny little thrusters and only two of them. So it's going to take a while to make any rendezvous, but I guess I'll get started with it. It's practically the only use we'll have for it for a while, probably. It's got a lot of food, water, and oxygen, though. And I guess boosting it into a higher orbit uh, to match our mobile refinery will maybe be beneficial. Maybe we can set it on over to the moon instead. And uh, over at the moon, it can help out with supplies. Uh, right now, it's the Mooner Station that is in most need of supplies. So, yeah, I guess sending the Mu Fuel Depot over there would make sense. Of course, then we lose our emergency depot, but we've got so much stuff floating around in Kerbin space that I, I think we're, we'll be able to dock with something with fuel, so it won't be too bad. All right, let me make the plot, and then we'll continue from there. Okay, wow, it's a really good plot. I just put a maneuver at my periapsis, and just start burning out from periapsis and we've got an intersect point here so that's excellent it uh, we won't have much of a burn to match with the mole refinery once we get there which is good because uh, this would take a long time to do that burn and it won't be accurate so four and five meters per second we've got way more than that it's just a matter of how long it's gonna take and it's gonna take quite a while so anyway but uh, we will try this I don't know why its solar panels were retracted. I guess that's probably because of the switch from 0.25 to 0 0.90, but I've extended them again, and it might take more than one round to make this burn. 20 minutes, really? Oh, wow. Well, uh, let's get uh, as much time warping as possible here. But of course we can't do uh, go around, otherwise we'll miss our transfer. So we'll just do the best we can here. Should have started earlier. Well, looks like I've got at least five minutes to wait here. Okay, I give up. I think I need to replot because we've deviated so far away from what I wanted. We're over here now. That's the maneuver node. So. Okay, uh, let me get out of time warp. And yeah, I will replot this. Okay, so we'll have to make a full orbit first and then come around a second time for this. But uh, we've got another inter intersect point here at 0.5 kilometers. So we'll just do that in an hour and 18 minutes. Oh, well, a few minutes before that so that we can actually do the burn properly. Alright, so let's go to it. Okay, here we go again. And much physical time warp. Uh, well, we're uh, we're getting quite a ways away from it now again. And you can see closest approach distance not going down so much. Oh, we got momentary freeze here. Uh, taking a lot of delta v just to move this a few notches because we've got that deviation there. Oh well, well, I can't see any option here. I'll just keep plugging away at it. Nice view though. Okay, we're getting a good closest approach distance anyway. Oh, that's the minimum. Oh, wow, RCS was really powerful. Of course, I've been using those tiny thrusters. RCS might actually be more powerful on this than those. Okay, so 1.2 kilometers. Let's get out of physical time warp. And, oh, that changed things. Well, let's head out to it. We've only got a minute and 21 seconds, and this isn't going to be able to manage much. Not very quickly. Of course, the mobile refinery only has 80... Well, it might have more now since we've been converting... To chemicals it's not gonna have that much more okay let's see what the mole refinery can do for us oh we're not we're not in render range yet uh, we're not gonna be in render range for very long okay there's render range got a bunch of substrate left but otherwise the conversion has completed 
not not the greatest efficiency, I have to say. Let's use RCS here too. Okay, that's the end of that. Back to the fuel depot. We're drifting quite far away now. I don't generally like to be more than 10 kilometers away for a rendezvous like this. Uh, well, that's an interesting situation. Also interesting is the fact that, I mean, yeah, for one thing we've got uh, suborbital periapsis. For another thing, we're going so fast that I should probably start decelerating now. Yep, that is the case. Would be somewhat ironic if we took so much fuel to rendezvous with something that we couldn't actually refuel it. Not going to be true in this case, but still. Alright, here we go. Five meters. And that's it. Alright. So, let's just fill her up. Okay. Did we... We barely had enough. Could top off the mob propellant, but again, I don't think that's necessary. I think uh, our mobile refinery has plenty of that as it is. So let's just undock now. Why do you say open hatch? Is that is that the entryway? Did I block the entryway with the with the docking port? Is no. This is the honey badger command pod. So what's open hatch? Open hatch. Why does it think there's a hatch? I don't understand. Anyway, let's undock the fuel depot. So now we have 916, definitely enough to transfer over to Minmus and get into orbit, so let me plot that out. Okay, at long last, I think we can light this one. And here we go. So after this, the business is to send the ore and substrate drilling unit to to orbit first, and then on to Minmus as well, and then get both this mission and that into orbit around Minmus, get the drilling unit drilling on Minmus, and make sure it can get the ore and substrate to this. And then we will be... well, we will have got the first piece of this puzzle in place. And then the next piece will be a drilling unit to drill for minerals, and then the next the next bit would be something that can take the metal, chemicals, and polymers. I think a lot of things will need to take the metal, chemicals, and polymers to convert them into the other things that we need. It's going to be quite a, quite an achievement to get all this set up so that we can finally build ships in orbit. That will be something. But at least we know what we need to do. We've got the stuff lined up. We have made the first step here with the metals and chemicals and I'll show you my little drilling probe after we get this on its way to Minmus. Okay, coming close to the end of this. Let's see. It's a touchy approach. It's a very high approach. And that's just because of the way we had to burn first and then make a subsequent burn like this. So yeah, had to take the the transfer I could get. Okay, so these guys are all on their way to Minmus. Dude Van, Bilbro, Ludgas, and Desvi. And life support is 532 days for the four of them, so they've got no problems there. And again, we should probably transfer the Move Fuel Depot over to the moon so that this Mooner Station 1 can get some food from it. But that'll be a job for another day. All right, let's get that drilling probe launched. Okay, and what you can already see is that I have named the drilling unit Rocky. And so you can guess that the drilling unit for the minerals will probably be named Rocky 2. 
and we can just continue on with the naming convention from there. Uh, it's got a substrate tank and an ore tank here and if I take everything off and bring up Megjeb well I guess we can just see it from here without taking everything off um, here it's got 3000 Delta V but these tanks are empty now you can see these these procedural liquid tanks are full and that's what gives it its huge Delta V but even empty thanks to the 3 ton drilling unit and all the fuel it needs uh, it's 28 tons now if we fill it up with or 3,000 units of it, you can see that that goes to 110.5 tons and then it has 571 meters per second at delta V, enough to get into orbit around Minmus and back down obviously. Uh, not, I probably won't be carrying the ore load back down, better not be, but yeah, that is the plan. It could potentially bring both the ore and the substrate up. You can see that here, the substrate does not have the density of the ore. It, in that case it would be 134.5 tons and the delta V would be 463 and we should check out Minmus. Minmus thrust to weight ratio not bad and so that's all squared away and actually if you look at it if we load up on both ore and substrate you see 268,000 funds. Taking away the ore and the substrate doesn't really kill our budget very much. Honestly, we we could just load up on ore and substrate from Kerbin and it might be more cost effective to just send ore and substrate up to orbit. But what's the fun in that, right? I mean, it's about 15,000 credits to just send full tanks of it up. The actual cost of this vehicle is much more than that. So, yeah, the, the logic behind actually doing this, drilling for ore and substrate, depends. I mean, the trouble is, we, we're using a theoretically reusable launcher. Now, last time it didn't work out so well because of the fairings. But presumably this time I'm going to be smart enough not to release the fairings before we get into orbit. Or at least before we shut off the engine. So, yeah. Uh, tough to say what's more economical. But we're going to do this. We've got uh, reaction wheel up top. We've got the uh, probe controller, docking port, obviously, plenty of RCS, RCS ports, and uh, we've got solar panels in the form of these, and also these. Okay. So and this is uh, it, both drills can do or and substrate, so no problem there. So redundant drilling units. If I could have mounted just one somehow, I would have, but it didn't seem possible. Okay, so let me lock these tanks. So the second stage is of course going to bring it over to Minmus. And the first stage is our normal Maximus 5. And that will attempt to come back down to the surface of Kerbin. We should have plenty of margin, but we will have to see. Let's take it out to launch pad. Okay, here we go. SAS on. Throttle up. Maximus 5 ready to go. A little bit of lag here, but alright, let's try it out. Okay, looking good so far. We are in the clouds. No problems. Overheating is nominal. Whoa, quite a lot of fluffy clouds this time. Lots of clouds. Quite an overcast above the KSC, actually. Okay, still looking good. We are definitely past max Q and continuing on with sufficient delta V at this point. Still go for orbit on this stage. Okay, that is a hundred kilometers and we're going to coast to Apoapsis from here. But once we 
get to zero pitch, I'm going to release the fairings. Okay, fairings, don't do me any harm. There we go. Nice and sideways, just like we like it. Okay, 105 by 90. Not the greatest orbit, but could be worse. Alright, time to stage off the Maximus 5A and hopefully we can bring that back down safely. But the second stage can be lit so that it's ready to take our payload over to Minmus. There we go. Okay, technically the payload could have brought itself to Minmus, but I wanted to test out the, the whole system. Okay, so the second stage is solar panels are being extended. We can also extend the payload solar panels just to make sure that they're okay. Right, so all of that looks good. Interesting that that's floating around. Why would that be floating around? Uh, wait, huh? Is... wait... This is space debris, isn't it? This isn't from this mission, is it? This is two kilometers away. This is actual space debris that got within range. Within, within physics range. Oh boy. Well, let this be a warning. We've, we've got space junk out here. But anyway, let's take care of our Maximus 5A. It has 910 meters per second of delta V. That should be more than enough. Let's bring it to its descent point. Well, I honestly don't remember the numbers for the Maximus 5A. So I'll give it a go, but I don't remember what I should be aiming for. Well, here we go. This marker is moving in. This shows a larger target difference, but I don't know why. Why is it showing that the target difference is increasing when it seems to be moving closer to the KSC? That's strange. Okay, let's hope we don't burn up horribly. Actually, we seem to be a little bit low. Ooh. That's not a normal place for things to heat up. Okay, what just exploded? Oh, strut connectors. Pshh. That's a weird thing though, I don't remember them exploding before. There to hold the fins stable. Okay, little rocket stage, keep going. Keep going, make it past those mountains, please. Use all that aerodynamic stuff you've got on you. Oh, darn. Okay, well, emergency time. Second time this week I've had to do this. First time was for the EDB, Sandbox EDB series with the Taurus B. Oh, let's take Smart ASS off. Oh shoot, too late. Uh, parachutes, parachutes. There we go. Smart ASS was going for orbital retrograde instead of surface retrograde. So, that was a iffy situation. There's apparently some debris there. 
Bad sign. Sparrow 2 didn't survive. Now the sparrow is not particularly easy to keep upright. So maybe this has a better chance. Doesn't look like a bad spot here. Ooh, lag like crazy. We, we're getting into the physics range of those parts. The Sparrow 2 parts. Wow, this much lag? Something really wrong with that debris there. Yep, something about that debris is causing this to go one frame per second or less. Okay, it's probably no surprise that the whole less than one frame per second thing was the harbinger of the game about to crash. So uh, here we are with the launch stage and we are going to try and bring it back. It brought us all the way back to separation. So uh, first of all, let me try and get rid of that uh, Sparrow 2 debris that was sitting there just in case it tries to make problems again. I wish we could just filter out stuff that was landed at Kerbin. That would be a nice filter to have. So it didn't show all of the debris, I just want the stuff landed so I recover it. Recoverable debris, that's all I want. But no, I always have to look through the list and be careful about things. Okay, so here we go again for the retro burn, and since last time we ended up too low, obviously, we ended up short of the KSC. This time I'm going to aim for, let's say, 34 kilometers instead of 32. Though, of course, my burn point might be different. I haven't unlocked the reserve tank. Okay, anyway, 34 it is. Probably this will end up in the water now. There's a big difference between 34 kilometers and 32 kilometers when you do the burn like this. But we'll see. And we do have 851 meters per second to work with. Okay, here we go again. What does our trajectory look like? Still looks like we're going to land short, honestly. So, yep, made a different burn point meant that we we ended up... We're, we're landing way short, it looks like. Shorter than last time, even though our periapsis was higher. I don't think there's going to be any need for me to do a retro burn here, though. So, I guess that's positive. Nope. And I suppose that's the struts again. Indeed, strut connectors burned up. Well, good thing for consistency. So after this, I'll conclude the episode. Next time, we will see what happens with our Minmus missions. Oh, what's burning up now? I guess there's a lot of candidates for things that can burn up, but I don't know what was heating up there. Anyway, uh, so next time getting the drilling probe onto the surface and seeing if it can drill for ore and substrate. Of course, getting our mobile refinery into orbit around Minmus, making sure that we can rendezvous the drilling unit with the refinery. And note, the drilling unit can't refuel itself, so we're going to have to figure out how to refuel it, since the mobile refinery doesn't refine into liquid fuel, so it also can't refuel itself, so it's a bit of a complicated situation there. And that'll be something that we will figure out either in our next episode or in subsequent episodes. Next episode, probably mainly just testing the basic system out, and then we'll see where we go from there. I think this launcher is water safe. Seem to recall it was, maybe. 
It's been a while since I tried to bring this one back. We moved on to the bigger Maximus X. Yep, close, but no cigar here. We're definitely in the water. Alright, we are now below the speed of sound, so parachute deployments now. Smart ASS is already off. Wait a little bit longer before landing gear. Well, at least there's no lag around here. Landing gear is down. Uh, we're going too fast. Still going too fast. Oh, okay. Ah, I forgot this one was like this. Okay. Well, despite having a lot of horizontal velocity there, it seems to be safe in the water. Oh no, it's tipping. Well, let's see now. Well, let's find out what happens with it. I'm pretty sure it would have been safe if I hadn't uh, had so much horizontal. Well, most of it's all right. Yeah, yeah, okay, so we got the parts back. We got 91%, let's say, and 128,000 funds back. Not bad, considering we still got an explosion on the ground there. Okay, so that is done. And now we will tackle the whole issue of transferring the drilling unit and getting everything into orbit around Minmus in the next episode and so we'll proceed like that alright so thank you for watching if you enjoyed this episode please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time